welcome, welcome. What time is it?
Have you thought about it? That last line that we sing, his love endures forever. Wow. Through high times and low times, through good times and bad times, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. How great is your faithfulness, O God. Praise God. Well, Liz and I want to thank you already for tuning into this program. It's an hour with Jesus, and you know what? We're coming up next week on our fourth anniversary of this program every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central in the U.S. God has been so gracious to us to give us the ability and strength and schedule to be able to continue this for four years. And the reason we do it is because of you. Because we know that you're tuning in, you're being blessed, you're sending us testimonies, some of you are sending financial support to us, which we greatly appreciate. And that's what ministry is all about. We're here to help you know him better, to hopefully usher you into his presence on any given song or any given evening or whenever you watch this. That song is special to me that we just opened up with. It's been a hard week for us. I have an extended family member who is in the late stages of a, an operable brain tumor. And they will be probably home with the Lord soon, in the next few weeks perhaps. I don't know. But it's been difficult. Uh, just hard, you know? just being brutally honest with you. Don't want to say goodbye to people on the earth, even though we know the destiny of the believer. And uh, tough for my kids and just a lot of McCalman relatives. So we appreciate your prayers. But every time I've gone through a difficult time, I remember my friend Scott Bauer, who was the the pastor at Church on the Way in Van Nuys, California. He took that over from a mentor of mine, Dr. Jack Hayford, who just graduated last year, I believe, to be with the Lord. And uh, Scott died of an aneurysm in his brain, and I mean, in a few days, he was gone. And uh, that Sunday morning is when I found out, and I was ministering in a church in Arizona. And I just decided to open the service with that song and sing over the congregation in Van Nuys, who had just lost their 48-year-old pastor. And the grace of God, the anointing of God, the goodness of God, and that song, that simple, simple song that says, For the Lord is good, and His mercy endures forever it just it just wrapped its arms around that congregation around me as the leader for that service and we just had a wonderful time singing over the bereaved body of christ in another city far away and i've done that with that song several times and it always ministers to me I don't know if anybody else, but it does to me. Because here's the fact. God's goodness never changes. His love endures forever. And um, I take solace in that This during this program tonight and in the weeks to come. You might be going through something that is just absolutely the hardest thing you've ever gone through. Take solace in the fact that God is still faithful, still good. His love still endures through the trials, through the tribulations, through the hard times that you can't understand. 
and um, I'm so glad that I served him. It was just so heavy in my heart last night around the house here, and Liz, my Baptist wife who doesn't really like loud music most of the time, decided to put on the song Total Praise. I don't know if you know that song or not. You are the source of my strength. You are the strength of my life. I lift my hands in total praise to you. Well, she cranked that thing up. Folks, I have a subwoofer that you might be able to hear wherever you live when it gets cranked. I hope the neighbors still like us because the house was bouncing last night. But here's the thing. I took my eyes off of the sadness and the grief and the disappointment, if you will. And I put them on the one who is worthy of total praise. The one who is the source of our strength, the strength of our life. The one who we can run to in times of trouble. How come? Because his love endures forever. And his faithfulness is great to this generation. Whenever you see a prayer not answered, it's not because he's not faithful. Why? You know it well by now if you're watching every week. He cannot not be faithful. So our God, who created the heavens and the earth and has wisdom beyond anything you and I can conceive of and who is not limited by time or space, does all things well. And I rest in that tonight. I hope you do too. I hope that's an encouragement to you. If you're going through a tough time, maybe you've just had a hard day or a hard week, or maybe you've got some sadness in your own spirit that you're dealing with. The Lord is faithful, and he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete that work. Hallelujah. All right, I don't really have any announcements other than We'll get to worship here in a second. Sing Over America, October 11 and 12. I don't even remember if I mentioned it last week. Listen, this is to me is becoming more of an important gathering than the first two that we've had in 2020 and 2022. Two reasons. Our nation is in a crisis. You heard me say it a couple weeks ago. It does not matter. Listen to me. It does not matter who wins the election in November. There is going to be mass chaos in this nation. You should know what I mean by that. First of all, no man running for president is the savior of this land. That would be Jesus. <laughs> Secondly, evil is rising at a record pace on all hands. And it's going to show itself regardless of who is elected. Here's what we need to do. We need to gather in October. And I'm calling you folks from the East Coast. I'm calling you from up north in Minnesota and Wisconsin and the Dakotas. I'm calling you from out west in Colorado and Arizona and Nevada and California, even out in Hawaii. Please, somehow, get to Dallas on October 11th and 12th. It's a Friday and Saturday. I need you here. We need a critical mass gathered to lift up the name of the Lord over this nation and worship him above what's existing now and what's coming a few, le few weeks later. Here's what I think God is putting in my heart, to not even charge a registration fee. That doesn't mean you don't have to register. You do, because I need to know how many people are coming, if our venue will hold it or not. I don't even have the Sing Over America website put together completely yet, but it will be in the next week or two, believe me. And it's only March, so we're okay. We're still seven months out. But I need you, if you've ever attended an important gathering, that's what this national worship gathering is. It's important. It's a critical time for this nation. The other reason for it is this family, this Hour with Jesus family, needs to come together and just 
be a family for a couple of days and worship together. This is my main thrust of ministry right now. Yeah, I still go all over the country. Lord knows I'm still going all over the world. But this is a primary focus. And we have a worship family here that is very special. And I want to invite you to come and be with the Hour with Jesus family for a couple of days. And let's just hang out together. I don't know what that means. I don't know what we'll do. We are going to have the Friday night worship. Then we're going to have the powerful Saturday morning prayer for the nation. When we have an open mic and give you an opportunity to express your heart to the Lord. Then we're going to close with a great uh, Saturday evening with the vocal majority who is a, a 90 to 100 voice male men's chorus here in Dallas that is phenomenal, have won every award in the world. And we're going to have Nathaniel Bassey from Nigeria come uh, and minister, my close friend, uh, and I'll be ministering again. It's just, it's going to be powerful and necessary. I can't stress it enough. I hope you don't get tired of it because I'm going to mention it a hundred times between now and October. So you don't have to worry about a registration fee. We're going to trust the Lord. But let me say, those of you watching, please ask God, is that something I need to seed into? Is that something I need to plant uh, seed into to help this nation uh, at such a time as this? Because we need your gifts to pay for the facility to pay for the artists who are coming in. Bob Fitz coming in from Hawaii. Uh, we've got to hire some local musicians, just different things. Marketing, advertising, lots of stuff. Hotel rooms, blah, blah, blah. So if God puts it on your heart, please send a gift and make a check out to Sing Over America. And you'll be able to do that also online on the website I'll make sure Robin gets that up and running very, very soon now. Uh, again, we're still seven months out, but it's if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, all right? Okay, enough about that. Why don't we worship the Lord? <laughs>
even so much to death on a cross. The Lord has exalted his name above every other name. Take refuge tonight in the name, strong and mighty tower of the Lord.
loving arms around your people tonight, those who are sad and lonely. Put your loving arms around them, Jesus, that they may find a secret place where there's no fear, for perfect love there cast out all fear.
Lord. <laughs> oh, come and lead us, Lord. Lead us, lead us, lead us. In this day and age in which we live, when there are so many voices vying for our attention, when there are so many falling away from the faith, lead us in the paths of righteousness. You know, it just dawned on me with the headlines of various Christian leaders who have had a reputation for many, many years and things being uncovered that are very sinful and the thought just hit me, this happens to any one of us when we lose our fear of God. It's fear of God. That doesn't mean I'm afraid of God, all right? That doesn't mean I want to run behind a door so he can't find me. Not that kind of fear. Not that he's going to crack me over the head with a two-by-four, although sometimes... The Holy Spirit <laughs> needs to give us a whack. But the fear of God is what keeps men walking the right walk. The fear of God, it's an awesome respect. You know what I'm saying? There are certain things I don't do to my wife or say to my wife or to anyone else because of a respect that I have for her. So for our Heavenly Father, how much more should we have, first of all, a first love that is above every other love for every other thing? And I'm not pointing fingers at any man because there are no stones in my bag to throw. But if we don't have a holy, awesome fear of God, we will become our own gods and do things our own way and feed the carnal flesh. And we are called to walk in a manner worthy of being sons and daughters of God. So that's just a word. First of all, never, ever, 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 ever put your trust in a human being. All right? I'm not mentioning any names. It doesn't matter. I don't care how anointed he is. I don't care how deep he is in the word. Never follow a man just because he's a man. Follow the voice of the Lord. It can be delivered through a man. But there is a lot of spiritual idolatry that takes place around the body of Christ because people get their eyes on a clay pot. That's nothing in this flesh dwells. No good thing. So follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus all the days of your life. Thank him for the ministry gifts that come into our picture and our life scenes from different times and seasons of our walk in this journey. I'm not the same man that I was 20 years ago. I think differently about some things than I did 10 years ago. I was influenced by one teaching or another that came, that went as the Holy Spirit brings more light. But follow him, not him. Follow vertical, not horizontal, and you'll be safe. Because in these days, more and more and more of the false is going to rise up and look like the truth. Satan has one purpose, to take you down. If he can do it through deception, he's a master at that. Hear the voice of the Lord. My sheep know my voice. Amen. Praise God. All right. End of many sermon. Didn't even plan on going there.
praise the Lord. Well, let's look into the Word for a few minutes tonight. To the 34th Psalm. I hope you're being blessed by something that's going on here. Hopefully a song has drawn you into His presence or something the Lord is speaking to you through a song or through the spoken word and now here in a moment through the written word of God. I hope that he's touching you and encouraging you. I really do hope that. From the English Standard Version. This is a psalm of my good buddy David. When he changed his behavior before Abimelech so that he drove him out and he went away. David had a tough way to go several times. Running from Saul and all of his demonic ways that had become who Saul was toward the end of his rule. And then kind of running from God when he sinned with Bathsheba. But David had a heart after God, didn't he? And that's why the Lord spared him. Who knows the ways of the Lord? Psalm 34 from the English Standard. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. That's good, good, good instruction for a happy life right there. Let his praise be in your mouth all the time. My soul makes its boast in all the things that I've done. No, Brother Terry. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. You know why I believe it says let the humble hear? Because the proud cannot hear. The proud are so full of themselves, they can't hear the voice of God, the whispers of the Holy Spirit. It says, the humble, the humble man, hear and be glad. Oh, verse 3, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. We just sang it, didn't we? Your name is exalted in the heavens. Exalted in the earth. What a beautiful, simple little statement that Nathaniel Bassey wrote to worship the king with. Verse 4, I sought the Lord, and he answered me, thank you, Father, and delivered me from all my fears. It's a great song called Let Us Exalt His Name Together That I Should Resurrect. I used to sing it back in the 80s. In the church I was working in, boy, those people grabbed that song. And it was a powerful statement taken from this very passage of Scripture. I sought the Lord and He answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to Him are radiant. And their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps. The angel of the Lord encamps, sets up camp around those who fear him. There it is again. We talked about it earlier. If you have a healthy fear of the Lord, that awesome, reverent respect for who God is and his word and his ways. The angel of the Lord sets up camp around you, brothers and sisters, and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him we were singing about that earlier he is our refuge 
Psalm 91. All right, verse 9, we're in Psalm 34, if you're just joining us. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Thank you, Father. What a beautiful promise. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Oh, he that hath an ear. Don't be a spreader of gossip. Don't be a spreader of a bad report about somebody else in your circle or outside of your circle. Think on the good things Paul tells us in the New Testament. Whatsoever is pure, lovely, of a good report, worthy of praise, and several other descriptions. Think on those things. 14. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace. Oh, yes. And pursue it. I had lunch with a pastor this past week. I was in Colorado for a few days. And he was telling me about having lunch with a pastor of a mega church there. <laughs> and the and the the mega church pastor was saying to the pastor of this little tiny church of 50 people, "Enjoy the journey." He says, "I have staff members who don't even like each other in my big church." <laughs> you think bigger is better? Not all the time. So the face of the Lord where was I? Oh, seek peace. 14. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Let peace be your umpire. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. Wow. God is serious about evildoers, friends. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. Some of us have had broken hearts. The Lord is near. I wrote that to someone today. God is near. Have hope. Take refuge in that fact. Take peace in that fact. The Lord is near. And everything that concerns you concerns Him. He's near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones. Not one of them is broken. That's prophecy, by the way, of Jesus. None of his bones were broken hanging on the cross. That scripture was fulfilled from the Old Testament to the death of Jesus. Verse 21. Affliction will slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Wow, what a wonderful promise. If you run to the protection of the Lord and take refuge in him, he will never condemn you. So turn away from that which is not good. Stay away from deceitful lips, evil speaking lips, evil works. Run toward 
the righteousness of the Lord. His name is a strong and mighty tower. The song I wrote, I think I've sung it once or twice on the program. It was like this. You're my strong and mighty tower. tonight and for worshiping with us i hope something's been a blessing to you just again a reminder put october 11 and 12 on your calendar we might have a live feed to go into your homes we might not i don't know yet it's important for you to be here if at all possible all right sing over america that's what we're going to do for two days we're going to sing over our land and believe that That prophetic act is loosing the blessing of God over this great nation. Thanks so much for joining us. The website is newglory.org. You can find out more about us there. Coming to Denver in the end of April, by the way. So if you're in the Colorado region, please come and join us. That information is on the website. God bless you. Thanks so much for Liz and myself. Until next time, bye-bye for now.